In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Affinity Designer to work with mock-up templates that were meant for use with Photoshop. And to show you what I mean, these template files are files that you could download from various places on the internet, which allow you to take your own designs and drag and drop them into the file so that you can see how they would look when they're mocked up into a real life scenario. And the example I'll be working with in this tutorial is this iPhone mockup that you can see here. And if you want to download this and follow along with what I'm doing, I will provide a link in the description of the video. So let me come back into Affinity Designer. Before you open the file, the first thing you'll want to do is change a setting. So with the selection tool enabled, you should see this button up here that says settings. If you click on that, we're looking for the general stripe up top over here. And if you come down here to where it says other, we're looking for this option that says import PSD smart objects where possible. I believe that this option is disabled by default, but if it is, just go ahead and enable that because we need smart objects because that's the feature that's used to render the design onto the template. And once you do that, you can close out of the menu. So once you've opened the template, you should be able to see over here in the layers menu, there should be a layer that's titled your design here or something to that effect. Each template is made by a different designer, so they're all different, but they, the wording should be something similar to your design here. I'm going to expand this thumbnail and you can see the elements that were used to make this mock-up. I'm going to select this thumbnail right here and I'm going to double click on the thumbnail preview. And when I do that, it's going to open up the screen design in a new tab. Now, if you notice what this is, this represents the screen that's being displayed on the product here. So if I come over here and I add to this design, anything that I do over here will happen to the original template, as you can see on this mock-up right here, because they are linked together. So I have a photo, or, or a screenshot rather, that I took with my phone, and I'm just going to copy this and paste this into the template. Let me get rid of this rectangle, and I'm going to turn off the visibility of these other elements as well. And then I'm just going to paste this in there, and then I will resize this so that it fits the document. And now if I come back over here, you can see the screenshot has been applied to the template file and now it looks like it's part of the phone. Now, like I said, every template is different, but if you come over here into the layers menu, you should see we have some other options that we can work with. For example, this option here, the space gray is enabled by default. If I turn that off, I can choose one of these other options down here. For example, the, uh, the blush gold, and I could expand this menu and I could turn off the background layer and now we have a transparent background as you can see there. Now, one thing I'd like to mention about using these template files with Affinity Designer is that a lot of them won't work. Like I mentioned earlier, these templates are meant for use with Photoshop, so that's really what you should be using to edit them. But if you have a simple mock-up template like this, for example, that just uses a perspective distortion, it should work okay. But all in all, Affinity Designer probably isn't the best tool for this, but it can work in certain scenarios. So that's how you can go about editing your mock-up files in Affinity Designer. As always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.